Good evening, our dear friends, colleagues, professors, and fellows all over the world. Today is our third webinar through the bifurcation camps at Tuesday intervention nights. The first webinar two weeks ago was actually the introduction to the bifurcation world, definitions, classifications, and algorithms. Uh, the uh, second webinar was about the provisional uh, stenting. Uh, all past webinars and that of today and the following webinars uh, are presented and moderated by a very high scientific level speakers and moderators. I would like to thank all the CEC board, Mohammed Zahran, Karim Mahmoud, Harisam Suleiman, and Ahmed Saeed for the great efforts for this camps and all our webinars and the scientific online meetings at Saturdays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays. Today, it is my pleasure to introduce two eminent speakers and two eminent moderators. Uh, the first speaker is Dr. Hisham Ammar, uh, consultant of cardiology at National Heart Institute. Uh, the second speaker is Dr. Ahmed Saeed, consultant of cardiology and intervention at Spinilcom Teaching Hospital. Uh, this session will be moderated by our dear uh, friends, Dr. Ahmed Abdelaziz and Dr. Karim uh, Mahmoud. Uh, 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 but we will start with Dr. Uh, Mohammed Zahran, who will uh, give us uh, uh, a short presentation uh, about the uh, T techniques. Uh, now I will pass the mic to Dr. Ahmed Abdelaziz to uh, give us a few words before Mohammed Zahran began. Thank you, Dr. Abdurrahman. Uh, uh, it's my pleasure to be a uh, part of this uh, uh, meeting. Uh, actually, it's, what, it's one of the, the, the most uh, scientific meetings I've, uh, I've ever attended. Uh, just science, no uh, no commercial background, uh, focusing on uh, uh, on very 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 important and uh, uh, and very sophisticated uh, techniques, uh, and the, the best of it is that it, that comes with the, uh, with the daily practice. Our daily practice just comes in front of you. Uh, what we what we really face in the real life, uh, it happens here in this in this uh, webinar. Uh, I attended the, the last two webinars and I, I, uh, I enjoyed very much I, and I learned very much actually. Uh, so to uh, just for sake of time, I will pass the mic to uh, uh, my, uh, my colleague, Dr. Mohammed Zahran, uh, Associate Professor of Cardiology at Shams University. Thank you so much, uh, dear uh, Dr. Ahmed Abdelaziz, uh, for your kind introduction. Uh, and thank you, Abdurrahman Gamal, uh, our co-founder and board member of the TEC, for organizing this uh, wonderful course. Uh, I think Jem has encountered an emergency, so maybe he's going to be a bit late. So I will present a short presentation about uh, the TAP technique step-by-step uh, -step, uh, intervention. So, uh, as we all know, uh, that the European Bifurcation Club uh, are uh, managing uh, famously and eminently uh, the step-by-step -step approaches to perform different types of bifurcation, and most of them actually are uh, board members of the European Society of Cardiology as well, and the EAPCI, and they give us uh, statements for recommendation every year. Uh, regarding how to perform the different uh, needs and the uh, refinements of those. Uh, so actually, as you know, the uh, rationale for the refinement of the T-stenting technique, usually, as we know, that the single stent strategy is better than any double stenting technique. And let's say that it is at least not inferior to any double stenting technique. So actually, if you decided to perform a provisional stenting technique, and then you need to stent the side branch, you can transform this provisional single stent technique easily to perform uh, a T-stenting uh, strategy. And this happens in nearly up to one of those patients. 
And as we know, there was a standard key technique in the coronary bifurcations involving a 90 degree angle. So once the angle is a 90 degree, you can very easily, as we said previously, have the proximal and the distal lips of the bifurcation of the side branch together aligned coaxially with the mother vessel. So the angle is not 90 degree, the angle is between 70 and 90 degree. You have a risk of incomplete side branch ostium coverage as you see marked by the red asterisk. And in this case, if you want to adjust the two lips of the ostium of the side branch coaxially, you will have a, a protrusion from the stent of the side branch into the mother vessel. So how can you do a proper tap technique? And let me show you this uh, funny image not every USB protrusion can enter into a USB intrusion. If you have a patient and you have a bifurcation and you have two stents, you need to know the proper steps to perform a tap technique. It's not simply inserting two stents inside each other. As we said, the first step is to stent the mother vessel, of course, and then you will wire first, you will wire the mother vessel and you will wire the side branch. And then you will stent the mother vessel, extending to the extension of this mother vessel. And of course, the wire will be jailed in the side branch. The second step is that you will do a kissing on the main vessel and a kissing on the side branch after rewiring the side branch. This is like a dilatation of the side branch. You did not insert the stent yet. And this was explained in the previous lecture by my dear friend, Dr. Haysam Suleiman, when he said that if you perform a provisional stenting, sometimes you need to recross and you need to balloon the ostium of the side branch. So here you will do this step as Dr. Haysam explained. And then you are going to insert the stent into the side branch, having an uninflated balloon on the main vessel ready for the final and only kissing balloon inflation in this technique. And as I magnified it here for you, you can see that the side branch stent positioning is adjusted to ensure the full coverage of the ostium by placing the proximal scent edge at the level of the proximal lip of the ostium. And you have your dot protruding into the mother vessel stent. And then you have your uninflated balloon into the mother vessel stent. And then when you inflate the side branch balloon, you are ready with the main vessel balloon to perform the kissing procedure. So you inflate the side branch balloon and then, or the stent, in this case, it's a stent. And then you will throw the balloon for two to three millimeter into the mother vessel. And you simultaneously inflate both of them together. What you are doing here is that you are constructing what you see by the green dots here, which is actually what we call the very small neocarina. As we said in the first lecture, the carina is the very small V-shaped structure separating the two side branches together. And this carina protrusion is like the door that switches two rooms from each other. So here you have a protrusion at this point of very few struts, two or three struts, because it's called T and minimal protrusion. And you construct this new carina by inflating the stent of the side branch and withdrawing the balloon for two to three millimeter into the main vessel, having the other balloon that you are going to kiss with already inside extending to the main vessel and then you inflate this balloon at the nominal pressure 
and simultaneously inflate the main vessel balloon to create this new carine. Any other step than this step will lead to this new carina will be crushed. And this whole procedure will not be called a tap procedure. It will be called an internal crush procedure, which actually carries a higher risk of re-stenosis. Then, if you want to do a pot technique for the proximal part in the mother vessel, you will insert your non-compliant balloon sized one to one according to the mother vessel and taking into consideration that it will not touch the new carina. I mean that the distal dot of this balloon will be just, just adjacent to the new carina, and then you will give the inflation by this balloon on one to one. And this is the final result where you have the new carina properly inserted in between the both vessels and at the site of the carina. Actually, OCT and IVA studies showed that this new carina is adequately endothelialized after 12 months. And if you want to see how it looks like in the bench testing, this is how it looks like. And this is the green arrow is showing you the small new carina. Taking into consideration that the indication of the TAP technique determines something anatomical, which is an angle between 70 and 90 degrees. This was a very short introduction on how to perform the TAP technique. So very much. I see that Hisham actually arrived. I will stop sharing now and Hisham can start sharing his slides while we get a short discussion from Dr. Ahmed Abaziz. So please go Thank on, you. Ahmed, and I Thank you, Dr. Can, uh, start sharing your slides. Thank you, Dr. Mohammed. It's uh, uh, very illustrative, as usual. Uh, but I have uh, one modification. Uh, as you said in the, the, in the first slide, uh, the, the main problem of the uh, T-stenting, uh, that you can miss the ostium, or you can protrude more in the, uh, uh, or you may protrude in the, in the main branch stents. Uh, and this, this, and these two, these two, uh, these two procedures have their hazards. Uh, what I, what I, what I do in practice, uh, that when I, when I, uh, before uh, positioning the side branch stent, I will inflate partially the stent, the, the balloon of the main, uh, the main vessel stent, partial inflation of the main balloon and the main vessel inside the stent. Then I will retrieve the stent of the side branch over the, uh, the balloon. So yes. the balloon at, that's, at this time, the balloon will, uh, will make an obstruction of the stent. It will prevent its, its protrusion inside the, the main vessel uh, uh, very much. And, and I will be sure at that time that I'm covering the, the, uh, the ostium of the side branch. Uh, this, yes. is what, this is what I do, what I, what I do in, uh, in, uh, in my practice. And, uh, and of course, the, the same steps after afterwards. This is actually described. What you do was actually described in a paper. I think it was published in the uh, Euro Intervention in 2015 by a group of Turkish friends. Uh, it's called the back step uh, cock procedure, where this inflated or semi inflated balloon in the main vessel acts like a check valve. Yeah, keeps. Yes, you you can. Do, this is uh, you can do it for, for any ostial intervention, even if you want to stent an ostial diagonal without protruding into the main uh, stem of the LED. You can inflate a balloon in the LED and pull the stent of the diagonal until it hits the balloon. Then this is one method also to ensure that you are covering the ostium yes. and not protruding into the main. Uh, Yes. Uh, I want to give uh, Dr. Karim Mahmoud actually uh, an, a comment here because he's one of the uh, most eminent interventionists in Egypt and he does lots of TAP procedures. I want to hear his opinion. Uh, so please, Karim, uh, give me your comment. Uh, thank you, Mohammed, for your concise, uh, excellent uh, uh, presentation. Uh, I, just, I just want to add uh, two points. Number one, the impact of uh, the side branch angle 
on the protrusion of the tight branch stent into the main vessel. With the y, uh, y shape manifestation, uh, the protrusion is expected to be um, more than that can we see in the T-shaped bifurcation because the configuration of the, uh, the bifurcation will uh, make the stent goes uh, somewhat more uh, in the main vessel stent. The other yes, comment- I totally agree with that. The more acute the angle, the more the protrusion will be at the lip opposite to the carina. This is very right. Um, the second comment regarding um, uh, the rewiring of uh, side branch through the main vessel stent. Uh, yes. If we rewire the side branch uh, through the distal uh, struts, this will allow better scaffolding of the main vessels into the side branch. And this will decrease also the protrusion of the side branch stent into the main vessel stent. Yes. However, if we go into the proximal struts, this uh, will make the scaffolding of the main vessel stent is less into the side branch. And uh, this will make also the protrusion of the side branch stent more to optimize the result and prevent the side branch uh, ostium under coverage. Yes. Uh, as as uh, Dr. Karim said, if we pass through the distal strut in the rewiring, and then we inflate the balloon into the side branch, what we get is two struts, which is the length that are like this, moving proximally to scaffold the proximal lip of the bifurcation. If we pass through the proximal strut and we inflate the balloon, what we get is a concertina-like effect of the two struts opposite the distal lip of the bifurcation. It's like you crush those struts horizontally opposite the distal lip of the bifurcation. So actually you can get a higher risk of uh, restenosis because you have two struts actually there. And the final outcome angiographically will be like the vessel is pinching. So sometimes you see this and you don't know what happened. What happened is most probably that you pass through the proximal strut the balloon inflation pushed those two struts like accordion towards the distal lip of the ostium. What Karim is saying is much better that when you pass through the distal strut actually, and then you inflate the balloon, it moves downward. You get two struts moving downwards to scaffold the proximal lip of the ostium of the side branch, which is much better angiographically and over the long-term outcomes. The next uh, the next logic question would be, how would you recross using the distal strut? Of course, you need to perform a double magnification. And if you have a stent boost effect, it would help you so much in the recrossing. You need to make your wire by the reverse fishing technique. You pass the wire first into the main vessel and the main branch, and then you withdraw the wire gently so the first strut the wire enters is the distal strut rather than the proximal uh, strut. Do you need to add something, Karim? Um, thank you, Mohammed, for uh, your illustration. Regarding uh, the, the wiring, uh, as we mentioned in the first uh, webinar, uh, the Y-shaped bifurcation is easier to uh, recross and to rewire. And we don't need a much bend on the wire tip while uh, recrossing into this type of bifurcation. However, in the T-shaped bifurcation with a wide angle, we might need a second uh, curve on our second or secondary curve on the wire tip to achieve a better recrossing into the wire. Of course, uh, sometimes we have this retroflex uh, bifurcation, and we need to do uh, 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 this. Uh, uh, the, uh, such as the fishing or hooking into the side branch. And this is the most difficult uh, type of the side branch uh, access. I totally agree with you. Uh, I would like uh, to ask Haysam uh, Suleiman. Haysam, do we have any questions uh, on the YouTube? And uh, Professor Hisham Ammar, would you please join, uh, join uh, sharing your slides? 
Uh, not yet, my, my dear. Dear Zahra, not yet. We don't have any questions yet on YouTube. Hisham, are you uh, there? You made it very clear uh, and uh, simplified as usual. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, Hisham is not there now. Okay, Ahmed Saeed, uh, can you please uh, start sharing your thesis? I think we can proceed. Uh, okay, yes. I, uh, I'm ready. I will share now. Is my uh, slide clear? Yes, it's clear, dear Ahmed. You may start uh, illustrating. So, good afternoon, uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, this is a case illustration about the tab technique. I'm Ahmed Saeed. So this is the coronary angio. Here we see, we, we see the p cranial view uh, of uh, showing the proximal LED and uh, the diagonal branch. So here we have a Medina classification 111 of the bifurcation lesion. Here also there is a proximal uh, eccentric lesion here appearing on the diagonal. It's a sizable uh, branch. So uh, what, what do you think, uh, uh, Dr. Ahmed Abdul Aziz, uh, could be the plan here? Uh, my preferred strategy, as usual, in the, uh, as regarding uh, bifurcation, uh, bifurcation in general, uh, apart from the, uh, the lift main, of course, is uh, the provisional the provisional stenting. If I, if in this uh, this lesion in the diagonal branch, uh, maybe uh, once one uh, uh, one frame back, one frame back, it will appear. Yes. Uh, what what I see actually in the the the, the diagonal the diagonal ostium I, I don't see I, I don't think it's much affected. Uh, we have a doubtful lesion on the proximal part of the uh, of the diagonal before the the kink before the kink. Uh, this uh, this one I could leave it I could leave it as a provision I will I will do it as a provisional uh, uh, stenting technique. But if in other views the ostium of the uh, of the diagonal branch. It's very big, actually, uh, diagonal, and uh, and I will plan to uh, to go for uh, two stent technique. I would prefer the tap technique. It's ninety degree, ninety degree uh, angle, and I will the the tap technique would be the preferred one. Yes, I agree with you, Doctor uh, Ahmed. Uh, that was the plan to do a provisional stenting of uh, the LED and taking in consideration this eccentric lesion in that diagonal uh, branch. Here we have uh, another view of, uh, uh, of the LED. This is the right cranial uh, view. Here also illustrating more, uh, I think that there is some uh, osteal lesion. Maybe I it's agree not with you. tight, ah, but the eccentric lesion yeah. looks more significant here. Yes, yes, yes. In this view, it, it looks significant. I agree. So as, as usual, we are doing in bifurcation lesions, we should uh, wire both uh, vessels. So here we started wiring both vessels and we have put uh, our stent. It was an acute uh, coronary syndrome uh, in STEMI. So uh, we decided to go for direct stenting. Uh, and here we positioned the stent at this place. So uh, what do you think about this uh, lesion after the stent, Dr. Ahmed? Uh, uh, the main message that I will never assess a lesion after wiring. Assessment of the lesion before wiring and before yes. ballooning, before stenting. Uh, 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 apart from the uh, what will happen after stenting or ballooning, but never to so assess the, a this lesion. This is the view before uh, stenting, as you said. Nothing. There is nothing. Yes, I mean, mostly it's a spasm. Spasm over the wire. Yes. Yeah. So we decided to go for uh, stenting the the LED. Uh, here, this is the stenting the main uh, vessel. 
and then after stenting, this is the view. So we have here a plug shift to the ostium of uh, the diagonal and also that eccentric lesion looks uh, uh, severe. So uh, here is the, the trick when we are going to uh, recross through the struts. We pull the wire as, as long as we have a tiny three flow in, uh, in the diagonal, we can pull uh, the wire and then uh, push the wire again. We will look to this uh, slide together. Ah, sorry. So here we pull uh, the wire until we are out of the stent. And here this is the proximal end of the stent and then trying to push the wire until we make a loop. Here the loop confirms that the wire goes inside the stent and not behind the stent struts. And this is the trick here for recrossing or uh, fast recrossing without uh, being jailed after uh, one of the stent struts. The loop and then to push. So now we are sure we are inside the main uh, stent, not behind the struts. So uh, it's easy to cross to the side branch after that. Uh, the next step is to balloon and the cell so we can open the cell and cross easily with the stent to the side uh, branch. And this is a regular balloon. We usually uh, use a new balloon rather than the balloon that used for the pre dilatation so it can cross easily. Uh, usually we go with a two millimeter balloon. If uh, the balloon didn't cross, so we can undersize and go for a 1.5 uh, millimeter balloon and then open the cell so we can cross with uh, a bigger balloon and later on the stem. We have so, a question of the, why, the, the type of the wire of the diagonal branch. Yes. Uh, Which type? I, I usually use the coiled wires for the side branch. I never use a polymer jacket because of, uh, sometimes you can, uh, uh, some people they say they don't use the hydrophilic. But anyway, the hydrophilic is, is, is not a big uh, problem to use, but it should be a coiled wire, not a polymer jacket. Like uh, the PT2, it's, it usually breaks. Uh, out when, when you're just pulling the wire back, it, uh, it breaks down easily. So uh, I use a coiled wire, either the run-through, BMW, whatever the wire, even uh, hydrophilic or non-hydrophilic wire, it's not uh, a problem. And what do you prefer for the, the recrossing of the side branch? Recrossing? Which wire? If, yes. If the same wire didn't cross, I can use a polymer jacket wire. It, it crosses easily like the pilot or the, any wire of the fielder wires can, can cross easily also. Uh, it, it gives you a good control for, uh, for the wire. Yes. So here we uh, pre-dilated the, the diagonal uh, branch. And then after that, we check with the NGU. And here is the second uh, or the main uh, step in uh, tap technique, which is the T and the minimal protrusion inside the main uh, vessel. Here, as we see, we have positioned the side branch stent, which is, here is the loop of uh, the balloon of the side branch, which is protruding inside the main vessel. But here, I think it is too much of protrusion. The second thing, uh, we have we have to put an NC balloon inside the main vessel because later on, if you stint the side branch with too much protrusion like this, you will fail to uh, put another balloon and then uh, to make the final kissing and it will be uh, converted into a colot technique. So here, uh, first thing, don't forget to put the main vessel NC balloon. And the second thing, don't make more, much more protrusion. We ju you just need to cover that uh, part of the ostium at the side branch only. 
So uh, here we just made minimal advancement of the side branch uh, stent. So uh, the protrusion is uh, minimal protrusion and is acceptable because here the stent is at the distal end of the knob of the balloon. So uh, like this one. So we can here uh, confirm that the stent uh, ostium is covering the diagonal branch ostium at this level. And this is the desired level to uh, stent the ostium of the side branch. So now after confirmation, we can stent, deploy the stent of the side branch and keeping the main branch balloon. This is a very important step in tap technique. After I stent the side branch, I usually prefer to pull the side branch balloon just a little bit proximal and then make another inflation. This is, ensures a well expansion of the ostium of the side branch stent. Uh, and then the final kissing balloon is stenting with the two balloons, the balloon of the stent, of the proximal stent, and the, that balloon that was in the main uh, vessel. And that was the result after the kissing balloon. What do you think, Dr. Ahmed? Would you prefer to, to do a pot or not? I, 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 usually, I usually put. Uh, I put every and then every bifurcation. Yes, even I would prefer, tap, but, even, but the as, as, even in the tap technique, but as Dr. Zahran said in, the, in his in his presentation, uh, not to touch the crina, just yes. to uh, to stand before the the uh, the my distal my distal dot of the of the balloon will uh, will be uh, away from the uh, the crina. This is the main issue. Yes. Okay. Agree. Here we have that, that thing in the diagonal. What, what, what do you think is this? Is it a stent fracture or just an under expansion of the stent or it could be a calcium spur or uh, it's a plaque herniation? It's, it's actually the same as before the stenting. Before the stenting, yes. we have the same, the same look like this. It mostly, mostly it is, uh, it's a calcium. Mostly it's a calcium it's, uh, protruding inside. I think so. So at that time, I didn't have uh, IVAS. So I decided to try it with uh, the NC balloon. And here the balloon is well expanded. So I think it's not uh, that calcium. I, I thought it could be uh, a herniation of the block inside the, the stent through the stent strut, uh, struts or just a bend, uh, acute bend at this uh, view. What, what do you think, Dr. Ahmed? Okay, so, and that was the final result after uh, uh, stenting uh, the case. So, um, Dr. Ahmed, uh, do you have any comment uh, for, for that uh, previous case? Thank you, Ahmed, uh, it was a marvelous case. Uh, actually, um, I, I have uh, two comments. Uh, the first comment uh, uh, is recommended by the European Bifurcation Club now is to do a pot after uh, the main uh, vessel uh, stent uh, is inflated. So uh, to complete the tab or make the tab uh, uh, complete uh, procedure, um, according to the ABC, we should do a pot at two stages. First, after the inflation of the main bit, and at the end of the procedure, uh, after uh, blunting the side branch stent. The second comment I would I, I, I'd like to ask you uh, about the, the, the procedure of rewiring. I think you used the side branch uh, uh, wire, the same side branch wire, you withdraw it, and then you introduce again into the side branch uh, of the main vessel stent. Yes. Uh, what do you think uh, about using this kind of rewiring if uh, you have a severe uh, osteal uh, side branch lesion? Would you... Uh, withdraw the side branch wire or or you will use the main branch wire for uh, uh, recrossing uh, the main vessel stem. 
Yes, when recrossing, I, I consider the ostium uh, of the side branch uh, affection. So if it is severe or uh, 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 I already lost the vessel and or the TIM2 flow or, or TIM3 with severe affection, I usually use a new third wire. And I prefer the polymer jacket wire like a pilot or a fielder wire. It, it goes easily, much easily than uh, the coiled wires, even though a, a run through can go also. Uh, but the third wire is a valid option uh, when there is severe affection of the ostium or uh, the vessel is uh, totally lost. Uh, we have a question from the uh, YouTube channel. Uh, uh, which which uh, view do you, do you prefer in, uh, in positioning the center at the bifurcation level? Actually, there is no specific uh, position for, uh, for uh, or view for, uh, for positioning the stint. Uh, if, you, if you are having a proximal LED and uh, uh, a left main LED circuit bifurcation, uh, I think you have to use the codal uh, views. Uh, if, you, if you are having like uh, this one, the right cranial or the P cranial view is uh, uh, more uh, illustrative. The left cranial I use uh, usually for the second diagonal. For the first diagonal, it's usually uh, it, it makes for shortening for the view. So there is no fixed view for uh, for any of the bifurcation. You can you can just uh, use the most clear view that uh, makes uh, proper uh, positioning of both stent. And I usually use more than one view. So I can use two angle or three even angles before I deploy uh, the stent. To be sure that uh, you are have you are putting the stint in the proper uh, position. Okay, I, uh, I, uh, as the previous comment of uh, Dr. Karim, uh, I would just like to illustrate something for our uh, our new fellows. Uh, those are coming uh, uh, to the intervention intervention procedures. Uh, new, we, we, as we see here, Dr. Ahmed uh, is a highly skillful and professional interventionist, okay? Uh, he know how to manage the side branch and he know how to uh, rewire the side branch uh, when, when, he, he, when he wants. Uh, but the standard is not to pull the, uh, the side branch wire except after wiring it by either by the, the main branch wire or with a third, with a third wire, uh, third new wire. And the second, uh, second comment, uh, this, this uh, side branch wire was shaled for a long, long length of the stent. Behind the stent, the stent, the, the stent of the main branch was uh, was very long before the uh, uh, before the side branch ostium. Uh, so we have a good length, a, a very big length of the of the uh, of the wire shaled behind the stent. So never to uh, to inflate a balloon with the, with this shaled wire inside. We must pull it. But after rewiring the, the side branch with the with the main with the main with the main branch wire or a third wire, as we said. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Ahmed. Uh, so uh, I will proceed for the second case. Yes, please. So here, this is the coronary angio. Uh, we have this is a, a non stemi patient. Uh, that was also rejected uh, from cabbage because of the poor targets of the LED. Uh, here we have only this osteal LED lesion and the severe diffuse disease of the LED uh, distal. And this is the codal, P codal view. And here also we have a, the branch of the second diagonal that is uh, totally occluded. And this is the spider view. And here also, there is an extension of the atheroma into the distal left main. This is the right cranial view. So the, Dr. Ahmed, what do you think uh, the strategy for uh, stenting this uh, distal left main uh, bifurcation? Dr. Karim. Uh, yes. Uh, yes, Dr. Ahmed, do you hear me? Yes, uh, yes, sir. Okay. Uh, uh, my preferred strategy in this in this in this patient will be the professional one. We have a clear, healthy osteal LCX 
with a very good angle, a wide angle. Uh, so the, the probability of, uh, of LCX affection will be very low. But I have a, a, what we see here, uh, the, the, uh, the lesion extended to mainly uh, after the, uh, the, the first diagonal. So it's a long lesion with a, uh, with a distal small caliper LED. So I will prefer to use two stents, not one stent. Because we have a huge mismatch between the, uh, the, the left main size and the, the LED distal size. Okay, yes, I agree with you. Yeah, will, will you consider uh, making it li like a reverse uh, mini crush or, uh, or DK crush and then to make the ostium of uh, the LED as the side branch and the left main circ as the main branch if it's affected? Yes, it will be a good strategy, yes. Yes, if it is affected, but I, I, I don't think yeah, it's, uh, uh, it's rather difficult to be affected. Very wide because already, and, uh, already, it's already the distal left main is, uh, is uh, if, if we check the caliber here, this is a diagnostic caster of two millimeters. So yes. it's, it's like the left main is like a 2.5 or 2.75, which is not the actual uh, caliber of the left main. Of course, yes, we have, a, if a left, we have a left circumflex of 3.5. So yes. at least the left main will be four, at least four or four, four points five. So um, the, I, I agree with uh, with Ahmed uh, Abdulaziz. This is uh, a left main equivalent, and uh, we have a, uh, a, a nearly normal uh, ostium of the LCX. So uh, I would fix uh, left main LED the stent uh, with the stent extends into the proximal LED, and after deploying the left main stent and doing a pot to the left main, I will assess the rest of the LED. Uh, for uh, actual uh, precise uh, uh, calibration of the diameter of the rest of the LED. Yes, so uh, that, that's the angio. So we decided uh, to go for stenting from the left main to the LED. So we have comment. We have commented from Dr. Heisem that he sees that we have two levels of bifurcation here with the diagonal and the, with, the, with, the, with the left circumflex. Yes. So did you consider the diagonal in this procedure or no? No, we didn't consider it because already it's okay. uh, it's a small a small vessel. Already we have the LED itself <laughs> small, and also it is a branching, and the branch is totally occluded already and filling from a collateral. So we didn't yes, consider and we, you, the and, diagonal. And you are in an acute coronary syndrome also. You don't want yes. to complicate the things. Yes, I agree. So as, as, our, as our strategy in any bifurcation, we wire both vessels. These are the two wires. And then we pre-dilate it the, from the left main to the LED. So that is after pre-dilatation. So now we're stenting from the left main to the LED. We are here using a, a four millimeter uh, stent. Uh, and then we cover till the ostium. So that was the stent. And then again, confirming and uh, flaring that it's ostium. And then the patient had the chest pain. So we did the, an angio here. That was the angio after uh, deploying the stent and the patient is having uh, chest pain. So here we have two things. This is, it's a, most probably a distal edge dissection here at the, edge, at the distal edge of the stent. And here also there is some plug shift through the ostium of the left circumflex, but with a TM3 uh, flow. So uh, Dr. Ahmed, uh, here is the second uh, view, P cranial. So here, this is at the distal uh, edge of uh, yeah, the stage. Yes, <coughs> I agree with you. It's, it's, it looks like a distal edge dissection, of you course. prefer <coughs> to cross to the LCX first and do it, or just to stent the distal and stabilize that dissection first before continuing, uh, continuing to the bifurcation? Uh, uh, as you said, Dr. Ahmed, we have a timetry flow in the, uh, the LCX and it doesn't look uh, uh, muchly affected, but we have uh, a significant affection of the, uh, of the LED uh, after the stent, especially that we used a 
four rows tent and and in, uh, in uh, we we know that it's that disease the LED and the probability of dissection is uh, is very high. So I will I will fix the LED first, of course. Yes, that uh, that, that was also our uh, choice. So we have uh, stented uh, the distal uh, edge dissection with uh, uh, a three uh, millimeter uh, or two point seven five millimeter stent. And then we hear the, the edge and then post uh, dilated. And that was after that. Here we have some uh, affection of the diagonal, but already it was there from the beginning uh, with a TMS3 flow. And here also one branch of the diagonal is totally included. So we didn't want to complicate and it's a small caliber. We didn't go through it. So we, we did NC post dilatation for the stent, for the whole stent. And then we uh, went for uh, recrossing to, to the LCX, of course. And then we opened the struts with uh, a regular balloon. And here also it looks like a, a 2.5 uh, millimeter uh, balloon. And that was the angio after that. Uh, Dr. Ahmed, would you, uh, can, can you stop at this level or you, you, you will prefer to put a stent for the side branch? Uh, it's not, it's not a side branch as, as any other side branch. This is a very big left circumflex, uh, mostly co-dominant uh, vessel. Uh, uh, osteum of LCX and left main. Uh, I I usually prefer if I will I will tackle the bifurcation to, uh, to do two cent technique. Yes, of course. So here we have the same as we did in the previous case. Don't forget the main uh, the main vessel in C balloon, uh, especially when you are doing a tap technique. And here this is the left circumflex or the side branch stent. And we are positioning the knob just inside the main branch. So we are ensuring good coverage of uh, the side branch ostium, which is the LCX. So here we have the main branch uh, NC balloon. And the stent, uh, the knob is just uh, inside the main branch. So we are sure that we are covering the whole ostium of the side branch. So now we can deploy the side branch uh, stent, which is the left circumflex. It was a 3.5 uh, stent. And then the kissing balloon. Two simultaneous kissing balloon. So here is the pot. I, uh, I usually do the pot for the left main, even if tap. Uh, previously, in, in tap technique, I think there is no uh, studies about uh, uh, proximal optimization in tap technique, uh, especially you are having struts inside, and when you are doing the the pot, you are not uh, you are not sure that you are you are, you are covering the whole uh, segment of the main bra branch stent before uh, uh, the protruded segment from the side branch. So, uh, but inside the left main, it is a little bit difficult to leave it uh, only with the four millimeter balloon. We have uh, put a 4.5 uh, millimeter balloon, and then uh, we have to be sure that we are away from the side branch uh, protruding segment inside the, main, the left main. And then we can do the pot at uh, the end of the procedure. And that was the final result after doing uh, the port. And this is another view, the PE coder. And this is the PE cranial view. And uh, at the end, don't forget your wire is going too much deep inside so it can cause uh, perforation easily. Thank you. So, Dr. Ahmed? Excellent, excellent as usual, Dr. Ahmed. And very, very nice illustration. Both cases are uh, uh, illustrated for the uh, tap technique, which is the best technique for the payout. 
uh, it's the easier one and uh, with the the the, uh, the best results in the bailout of the side branch uh, if it's done perfectly uh, it uh, it has a very very excellent uh, uh, long outcome uh, thank you dr ahmed for your uh, very nice illustration i don't know whether we have uh, any questions from the uh, youtube youtube channel or the uh, or the banner i don't think so Dr. Uh, Haytham, you, you have any questions? Actually, we don't, we don't have any questions from uh, you two. Uh, but I have a very small question for Ahmed. Uh, this is a marvelous uh, case as usual, Ahmed. But um, I wonder if uh, the patient had any symptoms after you fixed the distal lesion of the LAD. Yes, that, that before, just before intervening with the result. Yes, result. So you you do, you do, did not have any um, uh, any uh, wish to uh, give nitroglycerin and see what will happen to the ostium of the circumflex uh, and if uh, it improves to leave the circumflex um, without any intervention or yes, already we already we give we awkward. give no no we, already we give Dr Heisen uh, the nitroglycerin it's a routine step after. Uh, stenting when we see uh, an affection of the side branch or uh, or uh, the ostium of uh, uh, of a gelled side branch we usually give the nitroglycerin as a routine if even if uh, distal uh, spasm we, we usually give uh, the nitroglycerin as a routine after stenting and also before uh, coronary angiography okay so uh, you, uh, go on Ahmed go on yeah, yes, I, I, uh, this case is different from the uh, the, uh, the pre-planned cases. Uh, this case was an acute coronary syndrome. I will agree with the, with the, what Dr. Ahmed uh, did uh, because we ha we have a, a possibility that uh, this a thrombus shift or a plaque shift, not a carina shift. If it is a carina shift, uh, we can leave it without uh, without any problem, uh, or even di the balloon dilatation only. But in this acute coronary syndrome, we are expecting a, a, friable, uh, a, a friable lesion, a friable thrombus that can, uh, this, this may, may be the cause of affection of the uh, ostium of, of the LCX. So it will be a little bit risky to leave it, uh, to leave it like this. Uh, thank you, uh, Saeed. Uh, Karim, do you have something? Uh, I have a question to Ahmed. Um, Ahmed, if you have a, 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 a bifurcation lesion Medina classification one one one, would you uh, perform a side branch and you and you decide to do a tab technique for this kind of lesion? Would you perform a side branch uh, ballooning as a preparation before doing uh, the uh, main vessel stenting and then recrossing? Actually, Dr. Karim, I, I evaluate very carefully before I do tap for Medina 111. Because if, if already if you lose the side branch, it, uh, it can be difficult to, uh, to, uh, to make uh, the tap. Also, if you predilate it, you can go into a micro dissection and, uh, and cause acute uh, vessel loss uh, during rewiring. And it happened uh, before with me, as uh, I think, Dr. Uh, uh, last uh, time he, he uh, presented the case, Dr. Abdurrahman, for uh, uh, he presented the case that he, he lost uh, the side branch when he tried to rewire uh, because he went into a micro dissection. We already we pre dilated the side branch, so we are planning to do a two stem technique from the beginning, and we usually go for uh, the DK crush or. Uh, step crush whatever the technique you prefer uh, so when there is uh, a medina 111 and you are planning from the beginning to put a two stent uh, strategy bifurcation technique so you have to uh, use a, a, a technique like uh, uh, the classic t stenting not a reverse t stenting which is to stand to stand the side branch first and then to go for the main branch. So you are securing the side branch ostium from uh, a dissection and the acute vessel uh, loss. Uh, Dr. Ahmed, we have a, a question from the YouTube. Uh, 
uh, the uh, the the doctor that uh, asked the question it called this question is a naive question but i see it as a brilliant question actually uh, uh, she's asking you uh, leave the wire the, the wire that jailed from the side branch you have a wire between the the intima of the uh, of the main branch and side branch and the, the stent when you retrieve this wire uh, there is no possibility of causing a, a, an intimal injury yes at the, at the sh it can, it can cause, and this is the, the, the issue that uh, you, you should rewire with a third wire uh, as a routine uh, if you need it, because already when you are pulling the wire, you can make a dissection for the ostium of uh, the side branch, especially if, if you are pulling hard uh, the wire, uh, or the intima is much diseased. Yes, it can make a micro dissection. Um, but usually, usually the, technique, you, uh, uh, the technique of withdrawing the wire should be a very gentle technique. Uh, I always insist uh, if someone is uh, assisting me in any PCI and I'm in the mood to do some explanation while I'm working, the first thing that I say is that PCI is an art. There is no force at all in our job. There is nothing in our job to be done by force. We do not push anything forcefully and we do not pull anything forcefully. You pull gently, you pass your balloon gently, you engage your guide gem gently. If you want to do a deep engagement or you introduce a guide support, you introduce it gently and everything has a protocol how to do it. If you follow every protocol for everything, most probably in 99.9% .9 of the cases, you will not get uh, the complication. I'll pass the mic to uh, Rahman and hopefully... Uh, okay, Ahmed, go on, please. Uh, it's, a, it's a gentle procedure, but all the, 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 those who do these procedures are muscular men uh, with a few percentage yeah. of, uh, of female. We don't know why. <laughs> uh, we have a last question from the YouTube uh, channel. Uh, uh, it's a uh, it's nice one also. Uh, labbing uh, 2.75 value in, uh, in a forest stent, is it, it is liable for any stent or thrombosis? No, we, we have to post dilate as we did here with this with the balloon uh, uh, taking the same size as the proximal stent. So if, if you are putting a proximal four millimeter stent, we can the 2.75 can go up to four and 4.25 even uh, in that stent we have used. Uh, it was uh, uh, Ultimaster. So it can expand. Even the three, uh, the three uh, stent can go up to five and more. So this yes. stent 2.75 can go up to more than four. So we can uh, overlap safely and we can post dilate with the balloon. But here, at least you have to post dilate with the balloon that uh, ensure you are fully expanding the distal stent to the same diameter as the proximal stent. So here you are safe. It's not a problem. But the issue is when you are leaving the stent ostium floating inside the, the, big, the bigger proximal stent, here you are, you are having a risk of a stent thrombosis. So you have to choose the distal stent that can be post dilated more than uh, one millimeter, like uh, this Altimaster uh, stent or uh, the Onyx, I think also it can go and... Uh, uh, Biometrics also, yeah. Biometrics also and the new, and the new uh, Zines. It, uh, they have the same yes, uh, the same properties yes. and also yes. that, uh, yeah. all yes. all uh, all the FDA approved uh, stents have been studied studied means studied in patients to increase in size beyond the stent size up to 1.5 millimeter. The Medtronic stents have been studied to increase in size up to two millimeter. We do not have any data regarding any one of those stents that can be increased over two millimeters because it usually leads to stent uh, distortion. And this is very important and it can lead to stent shortening. You increase the stent diameter, but on the expense of shortening of the stent and distortion. So if the discrepancy in size is more than two millimeters, 
we have some dedicated stents, but we will explain it in a specific webinar. So I will pass the mic to Abrahman now, and hopefully Hisham is ready. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Ahmed Saeed, uh, for uh, your elegant uh, two cases. Uh, also, I would, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Ahmed Abdul Aziz for the marvelous moderation uh, of our first part of this webinar. Uh, now I will uh, pass uh, the mic to my uh, colleague, uh, Dr. Karim Mahmoud, uh, to introduce uh, our uh, talented uh, professor, uh, Dr. Hisham Ammar. Uh, uh, we are honored today to have him on board. Welcome, Dr. Hisham. Uh, Dr. Karim, uh, please uh, uh, go on. Thank you, Dr. Abdurrahman. Um... Uh, I'd like to welcome uh, Dr. Hisham Ammar. Dr. Hisham Ammar, one of the best interventional cardiologists in Egypt. Uh, he is uh, talented, uh, as Abdurrahman said, in uh, every coronary uh, procedure. Uh, I watched him uh, working, and I know he is very, very good in coronary intervention. So uh, we are happy to have him today among us. Please, Dr. Hisham. Thank you very much, Karim. Thank you very much, all, uh, uh, yani my dearest friend, Dr. Zahran, Dr. Um, Amra, Dr. Hatim, Dr. Ahmed Saeed, Dr. Abdul Rahman, uh, Dr. Karim, and Dr. Taman Ahmed Abdul Aziz, one of the, my best friends. Uh, I'm very happy to be here today, and I'm very happy to be here today. And this is something that has been very happy to be here today, and I'm very happy to be here today. اللي انا اشتغلت مع مع يمكن اغلبهم او كلهم يعني. وانا معلش البرنسيب بتاع النهارده شويه سمثينج لونج بس اي ويل تراي تو تو سامرايز ذس برزنتيشن ان فاستلي ان ذس 15 مينتس. اي ويل توك اباوت سم كيسز او سم اكزامبلز اوف ذا بايفركيشن ديزيز اند سم تكنيكال تيبس اند تريكس And it's hardly to talk about uh, uh, after Dr. Zahran and Dr. Saeed, but you uh, illustrated the techniques are very well. I will try to give some information and some tips and tricks I faced during my uh, work and some illustration about this uh, uh, part. First, you know that bifurcation disease is individualized disease. Why it's individualized disease? Because not every patient li like the other. Every patient had some characteristics, some variation in anatomy, some dynamic change in anatomy during treatment. So variation in the anatomy from the left main bifurcation or from plaque burden and location of the plaque or from the angle between the main branch and side branch. The dynamicity through the black shaft, this section, and also a side branch occlusion. So an appropriate strategy for every patient must be put in your uh, uh, first uh, priority, why and, and planned well before you're going to the uh, uh, cath lab. You know, all of us, the, the classification of Medina classification, I will pass uh, this part. What's the approach of the bifurcation lesions? You, we know that the class one, the recommendation for bifurcation lesions is provision, provisional approach, but some items has to be changed during your work or your, during your planning for your procedures. Is it true or false or true or non-true of bifurcation lesions? The size of the side branch, extents of the disease into the side branch, how is important is the side branch in these patients with specific anatomy? Angle of the main branch to the side branch was it's extremely important. Here is some study, different study has been done in the bifurcation uh, trials. We'll talk uh, some in uh, some uh, minutes to the, uh, in the next slides about the Nordic, but some trials uh, uh, explained how the provisional versus uh, two stent strategy, and the Nordic find nothing difference between the provisional and uh, two stent strategy uh, apart from PBC one. So find some uh, uh, MI and target region uh, revascularization and some meta-analysis, which is improved after that by improvement of the techniques and the techniques of two stent uh, strategy. Also here some uh, data, um, uh, national trial, 12 trials, 6,961 patients 
the five for randomized trial, showing that two-state strategy increased the DS thrombosis and increased myocardial infarction. But after that, after improving of the technique, another meta trial, meta analysis, and meta uh, analysis for uh, multiple nine trials showed that no difference between the two stent techniques between provisional stenting and two stent uh, strategy. Here is the Nordic. Nordic also found no, ch no significant change between the, the main visual and side branch stenting or the main visual uh, uh, stenting. And here is, this is a difference, but it's not uh, uh, significant. IVUS is uh, uh, important, especially in left main. IVUS in left main save life. I mean, I will not focus on IVUS, but I will tell you that IVUS really saved life in this patient with left main disease and bifurcation. And when you are targeting the IVUS, you have to target the direct imaging of both the parent and daughter vessels, not indirect. What means that when you put your your probe in the in the carina, you have to lock on the your parent disease. And after that, don't lock on the ostium of the CX of the, uh, for indirect vision. You have to go direct and, and go through the CX and what your study to image uh, uh, both ostium of the uh, main visible and side branch. You know that IVUS is saved life, decreased mortality and MI in patients with IVUS or non-IVUS in left main uh, disease. Provisional stenting, I will, I will start with provisional stenting as is, this is a standard in most of patients with zero Medina side branch classification or 100, 110, 010, all uh, preferably to start with uh, provisional uh, stenting. Why I wired both branches in provisional stenting? It protects the side branch from plaque shift and or stent strut from the in the main uh, uh, branch stenting. Also, the gel side branch wire facilitate rewiring of the side branch through widening of the angle between the main branch and side branch by acting as a marker for side branch or stem if the side branch occludes, changing the angle of the side branch uh, takeoff by uh, uh, the wire itself. And this trials to leave my center study showed that Gilled wire was associated with higher rates of re-intervention, uh, 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 absence of gilled wire from the gilled wire. Uh, so you have to be, uh, uh, but always your, uh, uh, keep your uh, RT side branch open by putting your wire in both main branch and side branch. And you have to be cautious when you're moving, removing your uh, wire. Sure, you have to, Rewire your uh, bifurcation. You have to keep it simple, but you also you have to keep it open by rewiring both both uh, uh, side branch and main branch. Some anatomy prevents you from easy wiring of the side branch, like a wide angle, like the complexity of the side branch, long lesion calcification, aneurysm, or tortuosity of the region of proximal to the bifurcation. Also, some difficulty. I will pass by the the tips and tricks how to wire the side branch. In a minute, you have to plan well your uh, your uh, procedure before you're going to the, the cat lab. Also, you have to select one or two projections with a bigger or better uh, uh, orientation. Also, you have to select a good backup support for your uh, for your uh, guiding. Uh, for the right system, EPU, AL, uh, uh, for the right system, easy, yes, 3D, RC. How to shaming your wire? Your wire have to different shaping, different shaping of the wire. Had it single bent, short bent, or single long bent, or wide smooth bent, or double bent. Depends on what the bent, the anatomy on the side branch. And here is some examples, some cartoons about the anatomy. Here is this this one is completely different from this one. This one is angle is slightly needs short short. A tip and another uh, second curve to be uh, entered to the side branch. Here is you have to put a long, uh, uh, short tip to enter to the side uh, branch. Also, some techniques to, to enter to the side branch is a pull back technique. 
pull back, you have to pass your wire to the distal or the main branch, and then slightly pull back your wire until to reach to the ostium, ostium of the side branch, and then go through, go through the side branch. Also, it's one of the technique to pass through the side branch. One of the newer technique is a long U-shaped technique. You have to, to shape your wire. I prefer to do this technique in extremely angled side branch in a big artery. Uh, to avoid this section of small art. So you have to uh, put a U-shape for especially for like a pilot with 50 wire when passing to the main branch or passing to the side branch according to the complexity of both. And then you have to wire the the, the branch when the other, the wire is uh, U in a U-shape. I'll show you example of the U-shape. Here you have to, you have to appreciate that, uh, that lesion here how it's extremely difficult this to wire the LED. But by the shaving of the side, shaving of the pilot 50, enter to the side branch and trying to uh, uh, puncture the, the, the main branch retrogradely by uh, that U shape. And uh, I succeed to pass by uh, uh, efficiently. Also, your guiding custer, you have to put, uh, look to some uh, tools you are, uh, you are dealing with during your work. Change the guiding custer if you, if you uh, need it for that. Consider new wire, change your projection. We, uh, first of all, you have to adjust your frames. Uh, also, uh, you have to consider your colleague uh, opinion. What type of wire? Of course, wire is, uh, workhorse wire is your first priority, especially in in in, in, in angulated side branch. Uh, filter FC, FC, filter XT, uh, Sion wires, uh, 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 so black wires are also my favorite. Some macro catheters must may be used on the wiring, venture or super cross wire. So of course, micro catheter also will help. I will see you some examples for both of these. Uh, also, double human catheter may be helpful, especially in this uh, uh, OM uh, bifurcation. You see how with the, how with that this this uh, side branch is uh, very difficult to pass by in this part. But we did what a double human catheter here, uh, and then we we succeeded to uh, pass by by this double human catheter. Here is the final result. Also, super cross angled uh, may be used, especially in these patients who have an, an angled osteal severely diseased LED. By the way, the angled super cross, we succeeded to pass by to the LED and then uh, uh, to the distal of the LED with the final results. Last results for this uh, 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 wiring is pre dilatation. You have to put it in the last because sometimes you have to, uh, sometimes it causes occlusion of the suicide branch. So you have to put it in the, your last resort when you don't have uh, other uh, option. Uh, here is uh, uh, also the rotation and also retrograde wiring succeeded to pass by through the uh, left complex and finishing the procedure very easy. Keep it open. Always uh, keep it open when the side branch has an osteal uh, or diffuse disease and the side branch is not suitable or small for stenting. We will go for six branch guiding catheter and wire both branches, dilate main, main branch if needed, stent the main branch and leave the wire in the side branch. Post the rotation of the main branch with gel wire in the side branch and don't rewire side branch or post or pre dilated the side branch. It's completely diff uh, no significant difference and also may end by section. Provisional stenting. When side branch has a minimal disease or only the ostium and that's when the side branch is suitable for stenting, six fridge guiding, wire the both branch, dilate the main branch and side branch if needed, stent the main branch, leaving the wire in the side branch, rewire the side branch after performing a bot and then remove the gel wire. Kissing balloon inflation, very important to ensure optimal main branch stent, morphology at the uh, uh, side branch ostium. Stent side branch only if the suboptimal results, tap reverse key crush or uh, key lock uh, uh, techniques. Here is the optimal provisional approach. 
the, we have a, a, a LED and uh, osteo disease valvula uh, branch. I'm oh, sorry. We have a, a, a disease diagonal and also a disease LED. So we decide to make a provisional stenting for these patients. When you're making a provisional stenting, you have to sizing your stent in accordingly to the distal of the artery, not the proximal of the artery. You have to respect the bifurcation diameter to prevent the carina to be shifted to the side branch. Here is the difference in this cartoon, this diagram. When you uh, sizing for the proximal of the side branch, you will shift your carina to the ostium of the side of the diagonal branch. But when you sizing with the distal, you will uh, perform like here, and after that, you have to do pot and keeping the side branch open. One of the technique to prevent the side branch to be uh, occluded. Uh, also, post dilatation, we uh, post dilatation with NC3 uh, in balloon, and then pot was uh, uh, done and what the correct the under expansion and specifically the recrossing of the distal uh, uh, recrossing and kissing inflation in the osteo stent covered the Mahadev Shafi on the uh, side branch. When you uh, some data about the when you are uh, uh, dilating the side branch or the diagonal branch by uh, uh, post uh, dilatation, you have you are uh, the, the struts of the main branch are distorted. I will show you in this uh, diagram when I'm sorry when you are dilating the the ostium of side branch, you have the, you are distorting the uh, uh, the main branch. We have to put uh, finally, kissing uh, if you dilate the side branch. Also, you have to pass by through the distal struts, as Dr. Uh, Zahran said, uh, uh, and Dr. Karim also, to better side branch scaffolding than the proximal crossing. And here is the diagram when you crossing through the proximal and the through the distal of the stent. You can appreciate how the side branch is completely opened after the uh, 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 crossing through the distal of the uh, stent rather than the proximal of the uh, stent. Also, how this also diagram show you how the stored of the, the side branch uh, when you are inflating the balloon in the side branch and not inflating the balloon in the main branch. You can appreciate your uh, uh, your struts here of the main branch to be uh, distorted. So you have to do uh, kissing after inflation of the uh, side branch when needed, if you need to uh, do the final angiogram. Jail side, side branch, not all of the jail, jail side branch is affected. Some functional significance for the side branch. Also, when you're doing a pot after provisional stenting, you will find that uh, after that, that uh, there is a improvement in the physiology of the of the uh, uh, FFR or IFR after this bot technique. So if you have a gel side branch, if you have a gel side branch, do not rush, do not do a two-step strategy until you do functional significance. If you don't have FFR, if you don't have a, 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 a or MBI study, we can do a bot first, after jailing and then send the patients for the uh, side branch, and, uh, unless the side branch included, of course. Uh, Dr. Hisham, may I interrupt you here, please? Yes. Uh, thank you for this uh, uh, point uh, regarding the fundamentals of bifurcation uh, lesions. I think uh, uh, this last uh, uh, slide uh, uh, using uh, uh, the TAP technique as, as the most uh, excellent and appropriate uh, bailout technique, uh, focusing on the uh, uh, benching out uh, as uh, this may be a carina, a carina shift or a black shift. And FFR here uh, 
may uh, uh, guide us uh, uh, to do tap as a bill out or not. Am I correct? Yes, sure. I will, I will okay. may, you. may I ask you, uh, 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 if, if you please, uh, to focus uh, on uh, this uh, technique, tab uh, technique. As you know, today uh, is uh, the day of the uh, T techniques, and we need we need your uh, uh, experience, uh, Professor Dr. Hisham, uh, uh, in uh, that bailout technique, the tab technique. Tab technique sometimes in our technique. Tab technique maybe you have to plan your procedure and start your team step strategy from the, the start. But when you, are, when you are explaining the tap technique, you have to explain the provisional stenting first as a class one recommendation. Uh, uh, when you find this bailout for these patients with, uh, with the tap technique, but we here we have an FFR more than it. Also, we have MPI, which is normal. Also, what's important of the functional significance in provisional stenting before you do tap, you have to correct your uh, information about uh, the provisional scenting. It not peel out. Sometimes you find that uh, lesion in the diagonal branch. It is uh, uh, completely significant. This the, this branch is completely. Uh, we have to uh, uh, do it now. But the Nordic trial and uh, this trial, when you're using the the, the functional. Uh, uh, testing as I show you in the previous trial, previous study, showed that uh, uh, FFR may be normal even you have subtotal occlusion in the side branch. Here we start to, uh, uh, after that, the, uh, to illustrate the T stenting. Tap technique, you illustrated uh, uh, too much, and here's some data about the uh, different technique and this cartoon. Explore, explain the uh, tap technique, and I think Dr. Zahran explained it uh, uh, very much. And here is the guidelines, also, also a class one, class one, and to revise your side branch stent. That is class one. Class two A is to two stent uh, uh, technique from the start according to morphology, we in size of the side branch. How to decide to go through painting or uh, uh, bifurcation or uh, 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 decay crush? This is according to significance of the main branch and side branch. And is it suitable for stenting or not? Is the side branch is diffuse the disease or not? Or, the, or your, your uh, uh, side branch have uh, some uh, uh, disease of the main branch and side branch? Also, which technique? When you go to the T-stenting, you go to the T-stenting when the angle between the main branch and side branch is more than 70 uh, degree. T-stenting, indications. When the angle between the main branch and side branch more than 70. Also crossing of the side branch, but less plaque shift, better osteal coverage, which is the advantage of the T stenting. T stenting is different from the tap uh, uh, technique. Tap technique is the, uh, 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 the development of the T stenting. That's, that's why when you're doing T in a Y angle, you have to, you, you, you will leave some gap between the stent in the side branch and the stent in the uh, main branch. Also, we increase the restenosis in the side branch and also in the main branch and the tab you explained uh, uh, very much the difference between the tab and the uh, T with the minimal protrusion from two to three uh, struts inside the main branch. Here's a case with the T uh, stenting. This patient has a stent in the left main LED and the stent in the left circumflex with the total occlusion of the osteal uh, circumflex. So, yeah, there's some patients. Uh, this patient is have an osteal total occlusion of the left circumflex. He has a, a, a stent in the uh, proximal uh, circumflex here, and total occlusion with no uh, stump can be uh, found. 
So uh, we tried first by uh, workhorse wire, but after that we 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 used a second wire. We used uh, a super cross microcatheter to pass through the uh, the struts, and then uh, we exchange the wire by uh, BMW wire, multiple inflation. Here is some uh, TV2 flow. When you are adjusting in the T, in the T stenting, you have to adjust your struts just flush with the uh, stent on the main branch. Why I used to uh, do this uh, side branch T stenting? The angle, uh, you can see the, appreciate the angle is 90 degree. And also I I, I don't want to, to, to uh, make another uh, uh, reconfiguration to the stent in the uh, left main LED. So I prefer to do uh, T stenting and the T, as, as you see, uh, the struts is uh, uh, completely uh, aligned with the struts in the main branch. I inflated the struts in the main branch first and then inflated the struts on the side branch. And then after that, I inflate the two uh, struts uh, near each other. When you inflate the strut, the, the kissing balloon, when you are doing the, the, the kissing balloon, it's better to do it more proximal than uh, 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 distal uh, kissing. That's why I will show you in this diagram the, the, the when you are doing minimum overlapping and we are doing long overlapping. You see this, the, the, the struts, uh, how it could be opened when you are doing long overlapping. It will be opened very well. I do some uh, uh, post dilatation, and here is the final result. I do IBUS, and we have no time for the IBUS to explain uh, what happened, but the struts is very good, well deployed in the lady uh, left main and also in the left uh, back. Thank you very much. I'm sorry if to. Uh, to go through all these informations, but I have to pass by this information before I explain this tap technique, our T-stenting, not tap technique, and what is the advantage of T-stenting and the, advantage, the disadvantage of T-stenting. Thank you, Dr. Hisham, for uh, this excellent presentation. You uh, uh, illustrated the, the provisional stenting as um, uh, uh, a preparatory procedure for uh, a, a tap technique, actually. I'd like to ask you about the difference between um, uh, the tap technique and the classic T or modified T stenting. This is the first question. The second question from Dr. Ahmed Zahran about uh, if you have a gelled wire in the side branch, would you uh, perform both with the gelled wires in this side branch, or you should do it after recrossing. Uh, tap technique is minimal protrusion. You have to protrude your 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 uh, stent inside the main branch, two or three uh, struts inside the same the main branch. Also, tap technique can be done with angle less than seventy degree. T, T we, we don't have, you having to go through the main branch with not more than one struts. This is a T sending. It's preferably to be the angle is 90 degree. Uh, second question about what, second question about what, from Dr. Zahran? About, uh, about uh, the pot, would you perform both before or after recrossing into the side branch? You have a gelled wire in the side branch so would you perform a bot before or after recrossing? I have to, to, to recross first by uh, uh, the, another wire and then making my uh, bot technique uh, after that. Um, there is a different if opinion I, regarding... If I plan... I, there is a different yeah. opinion regarding that, Dr. Hisham. Um, so um, that recrossing before uh, bot may make the wire enter uh, uh, below the stent strut and uh, uh, causing uh, this confirmation of the stent after passing a balloon. So what do you think about that? Of course, but if you have a, if you have, if you have a wire inside the, the side branch, you can go easily if you, uh, if you find some difficulty, you will have to what uh, before you go into the side branch uh, uh, first. 
But if you if you're planning for for uh, for for no stent technique, you have the you have to uh, make a bot first before you you have to uh, for recrossing your uh, wire. If you find some difficulty, it could, it will go th through uh, first of course uh, bot technique. So. Um... Uh, the bot uh, before uh, the recrossing um, will offer um, a, a, a confirmation that you won't go behind the stent struts. Uh, however, uh, many operators prefer for uh, the feasibility and for the speedness of the procedure to do the recrossing and do the bot at the end. Um, Dr. Hisham, uh, again regarding the T-stent, uh, we started with, uh, in the teeth stenting or modified teeth stenting, we start with a side branch stent, then the main vessel stent. On the contrary of the tap stenting, which we start with the tap, uh, the, the main vessel stent, then do uh, a side branch stent. Uh, I'd like to comment and, you, and uh, I'd like to ask your opinion about that that uh, the most, uh, the, the teeth stenting is, uh, is easy and it can be done uh, 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 with more easiness that, uh, um, uh, than the tap. However, the incidence of um, incomplete uh, ostium coverage uh, is uh, high in the T stenting. And the incidence of, um, the, uh, if you have a, a, an angle that is less than 70, you, uh, you, you will have a crushed material of a side branch stent behind the main branch stent. So what do you think, Dr. Shea? When you, uh, when you stent the side branch first in a modified T stenting, you have a, a risk of, uh, of crushing or, or the, the, the procedure to be uh, replaced by crushing technique. But uh, it, it gives some, some advantages. You, all, you have two, uh, two options, but if, when you, when you uh, uh, when your strategy is two step technique first. Most of our strategy is provisional. What we, I try to focus, most of our strategy is provisional st stenting. And the T-stenting after that is peel out if they have some uh, uh, complication or some uh, criteria that I mentioned before uh, 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 in the presentation. And then I have to try uh, T-stenting. In modified T-stenting, you have to with the side branch first, which is a risk of to, to more metal, or uh, when your uh, uh, stent uh, going through the main branch, also you have more, uh, you have to make a, a, a mini crush technique. Uh, maybe you prevent that by putting a balloon in the main branch, but also it uh, gives you uh, some risk of the of uh, replacing the, the technique by uh, crush technique. So uh, thank you, Dr. Hisham. Another practical question about the size of the guiding caster used in the uh, tap technique as the two stent technique. Um, would you prefer to use the six French or seven French or maybe a larger guiding caster for performing uh, the T stenting and especially the tap technique? So I think we have a connection problem at uh, Dr. Hisham. Uh, yes, Karim, I think uh, we have a connection problem. Uh, would you please, uh, Karim, uh, give us your comment about your own question? Uh, okay, Abdurrahman, I think uh, tap technique can be done with uh, the six French guiding caster except uh, the MD, uh, MD uh, launcher. Uh, most of the procedure uh, can be done with six French apart from um, some old procedures such as the SCS and the modified uh, T stenting. Um, however, uh, in some cases, especially if you expect to use a larger balloon, uh, 3.5 and 4 or more balloon, especially with the kissing, uh, you would prefer uh, to use a large guiding caster such as seven French guiding caster. I hear uh, talk about uh, uh, left main, uh, this left main stenting and this left main bifurcation. So allow me, Karim, to uh, share you the opinion, if I may. Okay, please, I some go. 
so you're referring that uh, it's the matter of internal diameter of the guiding catheter that uh, available in your cath lab that will uh, uh, will give you uh, the ter determination of uh, using this uh, six French uh, technique or upgrading to the seven French system. So if you have uh, the, the MD guiding catheters, which is the launcher guiding catheters, you can perform most of the um, bifurcation techniques, even uh, those at the left main with the six French uh, system. But if you don't not have it, you are recommending to upgrade to the seven French uh, system. Am I right? Totally, totally agree. And thank you, Heisen, for your comments. Um, actually, uh, if you have any concern about uh, uh, the completeness of your procedure using uh, the available guide uh, catheter, use a seven French guide catheter through the femoral artery. It gives, it gives you more support. It gives you a better uh, introduction of your device into the bifurcation segment. Uh, it gives you more, uh, it gives you more, more uh, easy procedure. So um, six French guide caster can be used in most of the procedure. However, if you have any concern, use the seven French guiding caster. Uh, so I think we, uh, we have reached to uh, this, uh, to the end of this excellent webinar. And uh, I'll pass the, the mic to uh, our moderator, Dr. Abdurrahman Gamal, for uh, doing the final wrap-up. Uh, thank you, uh, dear Karim, uh, for your excellent uh, moderation. Uh, I would like to thank you uh, all, uh, our uh, attendees on the YouTube, uh, our uh, attendees here uh, on Zoom. Uh, I would like to thank uh, first uh, our dear speakers, uh, Dr. Mohammed Zahran, who gave us uh, a very good uh, uh, brief illustration of the TAP technique. Uh, every step, uh, a tip and a trick uh, uh, at the beginning of the webinar. Uh, and then uh, Dr. Ahmed Saeed uh, uh, gave us a uh, real world uh, 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 demonstration or presentation, uh, two cases. Uh, first one was LED diagonal with uh, uh, a very uh, 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 good illustration of the tap technique step by step. The second one was left main uh, with a very good uh, tackling from uh, Ahmed Saeed. Uh, this was uh, moderated uh, by, uh, by our dear colleague, uh, Dr. Ahmed Abdelaziz. Uh, then the second part of the webinar uh, presented uh, by our dear uh, professor, Dr. Hisham Ammar, who uh, gave us uh, 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 the uh, fundamentals of bifurcation with a special uh, uh, interest or focus on the T techniques, uh, after which uh, he gave us also a real world case scenario of a uh, 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 T uh, technique. Uh, which uh, was moderated uh, elegantly by my dear friend, Dr. Karim Mahmoud. Uh, I would like uh, to uh, thank uh, uh, all, of you, all of you, uh, our dear uh, friends. Uh, next uh, Thursday, uh, we uh, will have uh, a, a, a webinar uh, on the Thursday of the uh, clinical uh, cardiology. Uh, it was. Uh, it will be a, a surprise uh, for you. Uh, next uh, uh, week, uh, inshallah, uh, we'll have uh, our Tuesday, the fourth webinar of the bifurcation campus. Uh, it will be uh, focusing on the uh, crush uh, techniques. Uh, uh, for myself, I will uh, present the uh, uh, lecture of the crush uh, techniques, uh, followed by uh, two cases uh, will be presented uh, with my dear uh, friends, Dr. Haysam uh, Suleiman uh, and uh, uh, Dr. Ahmed Saeed. And we, uh, we will have the honor to be moderated by Professor Dr. Ahmed Yahya Hajab. Uh, thank you all. See you uh, soon.